billionaire Jeff Bezos launched his first commercial flight to the edge of space Tuesday. The trip on Blue Origin's New Shepard lasted about 10 minutes. Bezos was accompanied by three other people on the spacecraft, including his brother, as well as the world's youngest and oldest space voyagers. For more on this, I want to bring in former NASA astronaut Ron Guerin. He is the author of a national bestseller entitled Floating in Darkness, A Journey of Evolution. Welcome, Ron. I'm so glad to have the chance to talk to you today. I have so many questions, but let me start with this. How significant is Blue Origin's launch of the new Shepard? What implications does this have for the future of space travel? Well, I think it's a historic day. I think this is the second historic day we've had in about a week, you know, with the first one being Virgin Galactic. Yeah. And I think I think these are the baby steps uh, that are leading to the dawn of a new era of space flight, where hopefully space travel becomes as commonplace as air travel. So you spent six months aboard the International Space Station when you were an astronaut for NASA. You and other astronauts had missions to conduct scientific research on board. But I wonder if you think there will be a time in the near future when we see extended periods of time and space for commercial trips. Uh, I think we will. I think we, to some extent we are already are seeing that with SpaceX. But I think that's the natural progression. The progression. This is the national uh, natural evolution of the the space program, uh, and I think we're going to see not only people doing suborbital uh, space tourist flights. We're going to see uh, suborbital flights from point A to point B on the Earth uh, that take a fraction of the time, and uh, part of the flight is outside the atmosphere. We're going to see uh, orbital flights. Uh, eventually, we're going to see lunar flights uh, for folks, and uh, I think that uh, we're going to establish a permanent human presence on the moon and. Uh, Hopefully, in, in a couple of decades, we'll have thousands of people living on the moon. I mean, when you say that, Ron, you say it almost matter-of-factly, but I mean, what goes through your mind as you contemplate this? Because understanding the rigorous training that you and NASA astronauts have had to go through is such a different experience than what these commercial space tourists are going to be experiencing. Well, you know, it's kind of reminiscent of the early days of aviation. Back when aviation first started, it was not commonplace for people to fly on an airplane. There was a select few with specialized training that had the opportunity to see the Earth from the air in an airplane. But now we don't think twice about getting on an airliner and flying anywhere in the world. And I think mm. uh, in the near future, that's what's going to happen with space space travel. It's just an, a, a natural extension of, of the progress that we've seen to date. I, I would argue that I'm you know a lot of people are surprised it hasn't happened already. You know, <laughs> we should be on Mars mm. already. We should be having, you know, many, many people living on the moon. Uh, by this point, uh, but I think we're we're back on track. I think we're getting back on track. So your book, Floating in Darkness, is a follow-up to the memoir you wrote about your time in space and how it changed your perspective on life. And I've heard astronauts describe what's known as the overview effect. But tell us, what impact did space travel have on your life, and how might it benefit the lives of others, you think? Yeah, I think it has a profound impact uh, on, on people. It certainly has had a profound impact on me. The first time I looked out of uh, a, a window on a spacecraft, it was on Space Shuttle Discovery back in 2008, and I was filled with this incredible sense of gratitude. Gratitude for the opportunity to see the planet from that vantage point and gratitude for the planet that we've all been given. And in a way, I don't think I'll ever be able to fully explain being physically detached from the Earth made me feel deeply interconnected mm. and deeply interdependent with everyone on it. I saw the true unity of our world from that vantage point. And, you know, all those things that we fight about, we quarrel over, all those things that we think are so important, all those things that separate us kind of blur in into insignificance when we when we see the planet from that perspective. And so how do you think this could help others potentially? I think the more people that see the planet from that perspective, the better off we're all going to be on planet Earth. I think people come back with a renewed sense of wanting to take care of, uh, of the planet, wanting to take care of each other, uh, of wanting to overturn social injustice, environmental injustice, and uh, the list goes on. I, th I think it can have a transformative effect if we allow it to. Obviously, you know, different people are going to be affected uh, in different ways, uh, but the potential is there. And everybody I know that's been to space has come back uh, with a, with a greater commitment towards those things. 
you know, I, I don't want to be a downer here, but I, I wonder if you foresee any potential um, kind of negative consequences of commercial space travel, because people have raised issues about access, for instance, at this early point in time, that it's only the very wealthy who are able mm -hmm. to do this kind of space travel. Others have uh, come back and said, well, this is the inception of the commercial space travel industry. And so the thought is, as this continues, the, the cost would come down. But, you know, do you yourself think of any potential challenges or things to kind of be on the lookout for as this industry develops? Well, I mean, certainly there's those those disparities are true. I think uh, those comments come from a, a sense of frustration, uh, a sense of frustration um, over the huge gap between the haves and the have-nots, and not only the gap, but the ex uh, the exponential increase in that gap that we're seeing, and uh, you know that's a trajectory that could be be very dangerous. But those people that that you know use that as a, as a as a, a way to, to denounce what's going on right now as just like a vanity trip by, by billionaires in a space <laughs> race is short-sighted. It, I mean, it's, it's not inaccurate, <laughs> but it's not complete. Uh, it's a lot more of a complex, complicated situation that has the potential to have tremendous benefits for everybody. Um, but there's also the aspect of environmental damage. I mean, we need to make sure that if we are having routine access to space, that it's done in, a, in an environmentally friendly way, that we're, that we're not destroying destroying the planet in the process of sending environmentalists to space to appreciate our planet. So that would kind of be self-defeating. <laughs> All right, before we let you go, Ron, if you had a chance to get on one of these commercial space flights, would you do it? I, I would. Uh, I, I would do it if I had a good reason to do it. I don't think I would take somebody else's seat, uh, certainly to get another couple of minutes of weightlessness and a, another view of the planet I, if I had some <laughs> research to do or, or if, there was a, if there was a real uh, good risk-benefit trade-off uh, that emerged, I, I certainly would. Uh, so thank you. That's a very astronaut-like answer, uh, Ron, <laughs> <laughs> thinking about what scientific mission could you complete while up in space. All right, well, Ron Guerin, former NASA astronaut, thanks so much, Ron, for your time. Really appreciate it. Elaine, it's been my pleasure. Thank you for having me.